Hello everybody, it's Clem and time to tell you how to tweak all pages of your Windows 10 settings to improve performance. This will probably be a long video, but I'm going to go through every single page of the main Windows 10 settings, aka this stuff on the screen, to get you the best performance possible and reduce the amount of shit that Windows throws into your background. First thing I'm going to go into is system on the top left. In advanced display settings, we're going to go to refresh rate and make sure this is the highest one possible. Then over in graphics settings, there's a setting called Hardware Accel... Wow. Wow. What Hardware Accelerate GPU Scheduling essentially is, is it's taking some of your CPU's tasks and throwing them to the GPU scheduling processor instead. So I did test this to see if this had any effect on performance. Um, in Tarkov, there was no difference whatsoever, and I tried to run the test several times with literally no difference, except... There was really no correlation at all between the numbers and it being on and off. I don't know what was going on there. And so I decided to test it in another game to see if it had any effect there, which was Rainbow Six Siege. And as you can see by the results that I'll put on screen now, literally the only difference that I found in these results was that there was, I think, a millisecond difference in uh, CPU response time. So take that as you will. So if you have a GPU bottleneck system, I would recommend actually turning this off because it didn't, it actually increased latency rather than decreased it for my system. But if you are CPU bottlenecked, I would definitely recommend turning this on. Now, another section of this graphics settings is the graphics performance preference. You may have seen this before in other optimization videos. Essentially, you can go through and put different games exe files into this section. And then from here, you can simply click on any of them and go to their options and set it to high performance to make sure that it's on the high performance power plan for that specific application. Again, it's not much, but ensures that the rules are being enforced that you set in place originally. And when I say originally, I mean the power options. Getting out of this, the next thing, sound, sound, there's nothing there, so we're gonna skip that. Notifications is really personal preference. You can choose what you wanna get here and here. It's all personal preference, really. Notifications, as in the action center, does have a small impact on your CPU's performance. It's up to you. Personally, I don't think there's any reason you should turn these off. It's way too much quality of life to get rid of for a tiny sliver of CPU performance, so don't even worry about this. We're going to skip focus assist and power and sleep both, and we're going to go straight to storage. Now, I've talked about this in a previous video. Storage sense should be turned off. Fuck storage sense. You can optimize your drives manually without the need for storage sense to do it when you're in the middle of using your computer. You could also just run storage sense whenever you want to. So I would leave this off just so that once a week you don't get fucked by storage sense doing a cleanup in the background. You can also go down here to the optimized drives option, which will bring up this window. And from here you can retrim your SSDs or get rid of fragmentation on your hard drives. I have heard that doing a retrim on your SSD may lower the lifespan. I heard that rumor at first, and now I'm not hearing it anymore, so I think that was kind of a fluke. But do your own research and make sure that whatever SSD you have is fine to retrim. Another thing you can do while you're in this window is go to the temporary file section. You may see it here, maybe one of the first five, but if it's not one of the first five, simply hit show more categories and, and find it. Once you're in this window, it'll pull up a bunch of different temporary file locations, and the one that you want to focus on the most, actually, is the Windows file, or, wow, or the, is, wow, is the Windows update cleanup. Uh, obviously, this isn't much for me, because I have cleaned this recently. But you want to go through, you can check n nearly everything in here. I'm going to check delivery optimization files as well, except for the downloads folder. Obviously, your downloads folder is where everything you download goes without specifying where it goes that is so obviously you would probably not want to delete this but if you do want to clear out that file because you don't keep things in there then you could do that too but if you selected everything you want to get rid of simply hit remove files and it'll do its thing as for that though that's all done and out of the way and the next thing we can go to is tablet simply switch this to don't switch to tablet mode then switching over to multitasking you want to go to alt tab Pressing Alt Tab shows, and then open Windows only. You could also disable Snap Windows, but I think that's a nice quality of life thing, so I leave that on for the hell of it. We're going to skip over projecting to this PC, and then we're going to go to Shared Experiences. You want to turn off Share Across Devices, because you don't need that shit in your life, trust me. 
I'm just kidding. What Share Across Devices does is it lets apps on other devices come to your device. So if you have your Microsoft account linked across multiple devices and you have apps in the Microsoft Store, then I'd leave this on. But otherwise, turn this off. You don't need it. Everything else in these last three options really isn't worth your time. There's nothing else here. And then you can go to devices. There's really nothing in here that you need to disable. Bluetooth, you could disable if it's on the background you don't use Bluetooth. Then you can check. There should be an option here to disable Bluetooth. You can turn that off. And printers and scanners. I would uncheck let Windows manage my default printer because again, it's just another thing that Windows will be checking in the background. I don't need that in my life. And as far as all these other things, most of them are just personal preference. There's no effect on performance with any of these things. Next, go to phone. Now I disabled all of these things using a special script that I found on YouTube. I'm cautious to recommend it as of yet, but I have not had any difficulties with it. If you want to research more of it by yourself, then I'd recommend looking up Chris Titus Tech and seeing his Windows 10 debloating script. But if you do that, that is your own thing. That is not my thing. Don't make me responsible if you fuck up your system because you need to know what you're doing and what you're removing before you use that script. I'd recommend disabling this though, unless you for some reason have your phone linked with your computer through this application. Now in network and internet, this may help with things like Tarkov. Uh, I'm going to take you guys through a couple changes that I would do to improve your performance with your ethernet, but I'm going to also explain why I'm not going to go through a certain change, but you'll see that in a second. Uh, so first I would go to change adapter options. And then once you're in this window, choose the one that you are currently using. However, I'm not going to choose the one that I'm currently using because it doesn't have some of the settings that I'm going to change. So I'm going to choose the one that I disabled and then go to properties. And then once you're in this window, you can hit configure, advanced, and then energy efficient ethernet, set that to off. Once you've disabled this, I'm going to actually go to my other one that I'm currently using because this one has this setting. Well, my disabled one does not. If you go in here and go to configure and then you see a window labeled power management, make sure you do not allow the computer to turn off the device to save power. This will stop the ethernet port from sleeping. Now, one thing that I'm not going to advise those who don't know what they're doing to change is their DNS address. Now, I, I generally would recommend to change your DNS server to one that is better suited for you. And if you want to know where to find that, you can simply go out of this. I'm going to go to my one that I'm currently using and I'm going to go to properties again. If you want to find DNS here, you go to the internet protocol version four, right click on, or, sorry, not right click click on it and then go to properties. As you can see, it'll pull up general and then you'll find the DNS option down here. I've done the research to find the best DNS that is for me using DNS bench. If you want to look that up and check that out, that is on your own accord or until I make a better video on it. And I'm not going to generally suggest a universal solution to this because there are different DNSs that work better for different people. So this will be something that you'll have to research on your own and I'll make a more advanced video on optimizing your network that'll explain a lot more of these terms. So if you have no idea what a DNS even is, don't worry about this right now. I'll make another video in the future going more in depth about changing your DNS server address, clearing out your DNS cache, etc., to improve internet performance. Anyway, closing out of all of these tabs, we're going to go back home and go to personalization. Now in here, real chads use a solid color, but honestly, you should not see any performance impact with anything other than the shitty slideshow. Don't do that. Then in colors, you want to make sure that whatever theme you're using doesn't matter, but make sure you turn transparency effects off. For the lock screen, you can choose anything as long as it's not the Windows Spotlight. Besides this, everything else is personal preference, and you can move on from this to the applications. You could go through here and find any applications that you recognize and simply do not need any more on your device. This is simply just good practice and getting rid of old applications you don't use anymore may help increase performance if those applications are still running in the background. Regardless, it frees up space and it's generally a good thing to do. The real important thing in here, however, is the startup applications tab. Now, this is essentially a different version of the startups list that you can find in Task Manager. And for some reason, this is missing a lot of applications that Task Manager has. But yet again, this is another place where startup applications can hide. So go in here and uncheck anything that you do not want to run when your computer starts up. However, I would like to warn you that you shouldn't disable anything that's related to security 
or your audio or video drivers. For example, I didn't disable Realtek HD Audio Universal Services because that's for my audio, and if I disabled that, we'd be having a lot more problems. If you see Steam, Discord, Skype, Xbox services, etc. in this list, and you don't use any of those the second you start up your computer, even if you do use it, uh, use it when you start up your computer, you could start it up yourself to improve startup times. So just disable any of those non-necessary applications. Next, there's only one thing we're going to change in the accounts section, and I'm going to blur a lot of things out here because this is a lot of personal information. In the sync settings tab, make sure you just turn off sync settings unless you really want your applications and settings from Windows to sync across all your devices. I don't really recommend this. Next, we want to go to gaming. We're going to skip time and language entirely. And this is where we have some interesting topics. First, I'd turn off Xbox Game Bar. If you don't use this on a regular basis, you do not need this running in the background. There's also the infamous game mode in here. Now I run with game mode on, but it would be very beneficial for you to test this for yourself. I've discussed this before in previous videos. What it does is essentially is a boosted version of the focus assist that has been skipped in the previous section. I love how vague Windows is with this setting, just like they are with everything else, because it makes testing these things a pain in the ass. I would recommend keeping this on if you are CPU bottlenecked or generally don't want as many applications trying to ping you on while you're gaming. And no, I'm not talking about Discord. I'm talking about things like Windows Update, which will be disabled when you have game mode on and you're actually playing a game. It helps to make sure that Windows tasks aren't doing things when you're actively using your computer. But test this for yourself in a couple different games and see if you notice any performance impact before you leave this on or off. Now I'm going to jump straight past ease of access and, see and search to go to privacy. In privacy, I would disable nearly all of these boxes. I only keep this because I like to see start results and search results quicker when I'm searching through the search bar down here, but obviously that's personal preference and you can disable everything here. In speech, you can disable this as well. Inking and typing personalization, you can disable this. And diagnostic and feedback is probably the most important out of all of these. These are all background things that Windows will perform while you're using your PC, which will not help with performance. You don't need Windows tracking even more of your data than they are required to. And secondarily, I like to fuck Microsoft out of every single penny I can since they sell my data. But honestly, do you really think that any consent that we give is going to stop or allow them to take our shit? They're going to do it anyway. Still, it's good to disable all these things to make sure that Windows is collecting as little as possible when you're doing games. For each of these next areas down here, you can disable nearly all of them from tracking. So location you can disable. I would only recommend to keep stuff like notifications, microphone, and camera. Besides that, you don't need apps to access your contacts or your calendar or make phone calls in the background. So I would disable all of the things that you know apps will not be using in the background. One thing that I want to pick out and talk about specifically in this list of permissions is the background applications area. You can generally be safe disabling all of these things, including Windows security, because it'll still be running in the background. However, if you'd like to receive active notifications from Windows security, you can check that. And if you use things like the Xbox console companion and game bar, you can leave those checked as well while unchecking everything else that you see in this box. This will make sure that a lot of these applications aren't doing shit in the background without your consent and without you actively opening them and running them yourself. Now that we're done with that, the final thing that we'll be checking is update and security. Now, everything we're going to do in this window will just make sure that it's not doing updates in the background. So if you want to adjust your active hours to make sure that Windows doesn't do updates in the background, that may be advised. Or you could pause updates for a selected amount of time to make sure that you're only getting updates when you really want them to. I'd also head over to the Delivery Optimization tab and disable Allow Downloads from Other PCs. Then in the Advanced Options, I'd make sure you have Absolute Bandwidth checked so that when you do update Windows, it'll update as fast as possible. Besides that, that is all the changes that I would recommend making in specifically the Windows Settings app. Now, there are a lot of other changes that I would make besides this, which I will be putting in other videos, but I wanted to make something basic that everybody could follow because everybody has the Windows Settings to help improve your performance a little bit. I'd say you'd find the best performance boost for those that are CPU bottlenecks. So if you are, let me know about your performance boost, possible performance boost in the comments below and the other tips you may have. I'm always looking for more things to make videos about, so if you guys have anything you'd like to see me do some research on and check out, 
I'd love to hear it in the comments as well. And I'd also like to thank you guys for all the support recently. I know it's been a little bit since I've uploaded, but I swear I'm not dead. I just had midterms. So now that those are out of the way, I'm on spring break, and I'll be pumping out a lot of content for you guys to enjoy, and hopefully for your PCs to enjoy as well. But with that all out of the way, thank you guys for all the support, and if you did like this, like the video so that other people can see that it was actually legitimate. And with that out of the way, this is Clem, clocking out. Later.